Hello everyone, I am Torior and welcome to my newest Hans of Iron 4 video. Today we will be testing Combat With. I will play a game as Germany, build up to a certain point, then save and repeatedly fight the Soviet Union with armies using different Combat Withs. And we're gonna see which one is the most effective. Now this requires some leeway in the testing method, we can't be super precise, but I'll do my best to make it uh, at least Helpful. Right, and this time we're not doing Iron Man because I'm gonna be saving and reloading before the fight. Regular difficulty, historical focuses, Germany. Well, let's go. We're not going to expand very much. Uh, I'm going to conquer Poland, Czechoslovakia and possibly Yugoslavia if they agree, whilst allying Hungary and Romania to attack the Soviet Union from here. We'll not mess with the Allies, we won't attack them at all, and we will just focus on the Soviet Union. We start with 30 units, which is enough. For our purposes, I'm not starting with Rhineland, I am instead starting with the four-year plan, because we want to attack Poland with a normal war goal early on. If we do Rhineland and Anschluss and so on, there might be enough world tension for the Allies to guarantee Poland, and we wouldn't want that. Production. Let's cancel support equipment, cancel artillery, tanks, we'll keep the cars, no planes, and some trains. The navy won't matter, but let's finish the ships we already have underway. I'm going to be using pure infantry with no support. And not just because I like infantry, I would prefer to use it with support because it's stronger, but then it wouldn't scale linearly. Because if I just add a bit of infantry, the unit is stronger by this bit of infantry, but it also gets bonuses from the supports, which do not scale. So I think they would uh, be damaging to our experiment results. Two factories on cars, two factories on trains should be enough at least for now. Let's make a lot of guns, start with some civilian factories, and then we will top everything up with military ones, once these are done. Boost our industry a bit, and our infantry. And that's all we're interested in, just infantry. Right, let's get going. Once we get enough political power, we'll start justifying on Poland. If we do it early, as the first thing we do, nobody will care and there will be no guarantees. Now, we could attack southward, for example. We could attack Yugoslavia and take out Yugoslavia, Romania, Czechoslovakia and France early. Um, but... I guess that would be a bit too much. Also, I want Poland to be mine so we can have a nice border. This is not about conquest, this is about testing. Let's train more troops. I'll train cavalry, because it is the smallest unit, so it will train the fastest. This will do. We should have enough political power to justify a war goal in the moment. Let's go. And once we're done, we'll attack Poland. Also, I don't have to do Rhineland, because once we start fighting Poland, we can just bypass it. Of course, it does give some political power and army experience, but it also increases the world tension, and we don't want that. Let's do Grossraum Wirtschaft and use that to turn Romania fascist. Oh right, almost forgot to cancel the Mephil bills. I don't like the Mephil bills. Let's let them expire. Because they take away from my political power. And I like my political power. Now, a field marshal. Someone with the brilliant strategist trait who is not yet an advisor. Dietrich will do nicely. Martin Bormann. And level 4 generals everywhere. Actually, I'll need two field marshals, so let's make sure Kesseling is also in the mix. Aggressive assaulter. Oh, new focus. Align Romania. We want to make sure they are in my faction before we start fighting the Soviets. Oh, I might need more cars. Oh no, I'm actually using motorized. Let's switch that all to infantry, and that'll no longer be a problem. Maybe three factories on that. Right, we've aligned Romania. Hungary should turn to us anyway, so we don't need that really. Our Turkey. Full army group of infantry is ready. Two armies in Prussia, and three over here. And be aggressive. And that's how many units we'll need. Lowest priority for now. We'll fix that soon. Get in position. And planes. I'll probably not use planes later in order to minimize the differences between uh, various runs. Rudolf Hess. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna cancel this for a moment so that the manpower can go to reinforcements. Okay, I can train uh, the armies a bit later. We only need that one army group for Poland and I want two for the Soviets. I actually did Grossraum Wirtschaft, didn't I? So I should probably do roads first. Yeah, that'll make building the factories more efficient. Yeah, and when you're done with civilian factories, build, we'll build military ones. Our Turkey's done. How long until I attack Poland? Five days. So there's no need to start a new focus yet. So wait a few days until we attack. War goes here. Let's declare war immediately. No allies because we have no allies. And now we can bypass Rhineland and go straight for Anschluss. Okay, let's go. Sorry, Poland. This won't take long. Let's create a new template of just cavalry for garrisons. In the meantime, we're almost done with Poland. Make sure to use the cavalry template because it's more efficient. For well, Warsaw has happened and we're about to defeat Poland, it seems. Radom is the capital. Okay. And we're done. 
take all states, please. Right, there will be no more fighting for a while. Just go to the border and we can train 117 more units. Time for Goebbels. And we're getting a crazy amount of political power. Oh, I should increase stability. Should have done that a bit earlier, actually. Anschluss, here we go. Oh, we got extra troops. That's nine extra divisions. Or well, we can subtract nine from these. Next up, Sudetenland. Hopefully we'll take Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia out peacefully. But if not, it's also okay. Free trade for better factory output and construction speed and research. Actually, I don't need to rush Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia. I can let them build up their factories a bit and in the meantime, get my own free factories from here. Should probably do that. Winter conference, wonderful. Work conditions, please. And let's get the extra factories. Those are civilian ones, so the earlier we get them, the more use we get out of them. This also goes for stuff like Czechoslovakia, because the earlier we get them, uh, the faster we'll have enough control over their territory to actually use their factories. But on the other hand, if we delay this, they'll be able to build more, perhaps get some from focuses. So I guess both paths are fine. War economy. Troops are in the field. Time to start creating our templates. Let's uh, duplicate uh, the Austrian one, because ours has two support companies, there has one, and we want zero. This is 18 width, so let's just call it 18, and remove the engineers. Second army group needs a guy. Who's it gonna be? Let's get uh, Guderian. And this Germany. All my generals and field marshals I'm using here are level 4, which is pretty powerful. Switching all my units to the 18 template. We'll run out of manpower soon, but well, that won't really be a problem. You guys spread out a bit. Lots of things happening. Let's do Kader F. Wagen. Alright, I finished the next level of concentrated industry, so let's get even more factories. Maybe I'm overdoing it on the civilian ones. Nah, it'll pay off. We still have time before the war. Excessive conscription. Let's get the professional officer call. Okay, research slot now, and then we go into peaceful conquests. Who can I invite into my faction? Hungary. Sure, let's do that. I still need Romania to turn fascist. Industrial concern? Right, time to go into some conquests. Let's demand Slovenia. And research some very heavily ahead of time industry technology. Inventory equipment designer, please. I'm going to improve relations with Yugoslavia. It probably does nothing to make them want to submit to us, but uh, let's say it's an element of roleplay. Make them see us as a benevolent overlord. All right, a triumph, wonderful. We can finish off Czechoslovakia later. Let's focus on Yugoslavia. Also Greece. Once again, I don't think improving relations does anything, but it just feels right to do so, if I'm intending to put diplomatic pressure on them. You still request sale of airplanes. Sure, you can have bombers while you're still alive. And you can now invite Romania, because thanks to us making them fascist earlier, they're now legionary Romania. Invite the faction, please. And with that, we'll soon be able to make them our puppet. Better computing machine. Change your front line. Go into Romania as well. Time to get some experience. Army regrouping and infantry experts. Fate of Yugoslavia. Also, let's exercise these armies. Once you're finished with all these wonderful civilian factories, make sure to get military ones. In our core territory. Roads everywhere first. And then we fill everything with military factories. Army offense expert. Oh, and stop the exercise for a moment. I'm not sure if their current state of organization factors into the relative strength uh, calculation that happens. Let's not risk it. Fate of Yugoslavia, annex all of it, please. Don't need more puppets. We want to carve up Greece, but I think if I first make Romania my puppet, which I can do here, they might actually accept being carved up. Let's see. Because integrate war economies makes Hungary and Romania, if they are in my faction, well, it makes them my puppets. Also, it gives military factories. Let's also get an army logistics expert. Oh, this is unfortunate. Wait a minute, I will get military factories actually in non-core states. Is that because I am currently trying to build in all my core states. If that is the case, let's cancel the military factory builds for now, so maybe I can get some core military factories, which are vastly superior to non-core ones. Did it update? It did not update. Maybe it will when it finishes. I'd much rather get that in my core territory. I don't know where they appeared. Doesn't really matter anymore. Let's do second to be an award. How can you still be guaranteed by Romania? Oh, right. They have to accept first. And yes, it worked. So the factories are in core territory, because there was room in core territory here. And this gives me one in Białystok, so that's not perfect. But the other one is in core territory. Wonderful. So we now have two new puppets, Hungary and Romania. And we can recommission the military factory construction in core territory. That will really do nicely. Right, where was I? Oh yeah, so now, if Greece doesn't have a guarantee like it did from Romania, they might want to submit to us, which would be wonderful. I still have some time before I fight the Soviets. Bulgaria and Italy will likely join my faction too. We'll have a nice base. And I have more political power than I need. We don't really want to do mobile warfare as a doctrine. It does nothing for us if we're just using infantry. The rest don't really have value to us either. So let's see what else we can use that political power on. The Dutch. Let's send it to the Dutch and do anti-democratic and anti-communist raids. 
for greater stability. Also, research nuclear technology. I should actually get the nuclear theories, where is he? Heisenberg, if I'm doing that. Carve up Greece. Um, sure, let's bind Bulgaria to us. Will they submit? They did. That actually means we might get Greece for free. Let's do that. Greece actually makes a wonderful puppet, because they're very aggressive in their naval invasions. Do we want even more civilian factories in the territories that we previously designated for them? Yeah, I'm a bit of a maniac when it comes to civilian factories. Better guns, here we go. Bulgaria approaches the German Reich. Can we get them into a faction? Not yet, but maybe soon. And after we're done with Greece, it'll be time for Czechoslovakia and Italy. And then the Soviet Union. No, Turkey, we shall not invest. Fate of Greece. Greece submits. Wonderful. So Greece, the Hellenic state, is currently my puppet. Absolutely wonderful. Now time for Czechoslovakia and then Italy. And then we'll be ready. Maybe Bulgaria will join us, maybe they won't. Doesn't really matter. And we're supposed to be courting the Dutch. Let's keep doing that. Do we want to give them paramilitary training? Nah, they will be okay without it. More anti-communist and anti-democratic raids. Czechoslovakia. And by now they should have built some factories, so we'll get more. Donate fighters to Bulgaria. Sure, whatever. And improved worker conditions again. We'll have so much stability. There isn't really much to research, so let's just continue doing stuff ahead of time. Czechoslovakia. All of it belongs to us. They submit. We're now bigger. Second win award. Doesn't really do much since they're both my puppets, but I need it to do alliance with Italy. Unless they would just uh, agree to join, which they wouldn't. I don't really need Italy, but I'll take any help I can get. As usual, pressure the Dutch some more. We have way too much political power. Probably shouldn't have hired Rudolf Hess. More anti-communist raids. Will the Dutch submit to me? I'm not making a spy agency. This is on purpose. Don't want them, you know, clouding the results. Same for planes. We won't be using the planes. But I will make my inventory as strong as I can in the time we have. American operative. What are you guys doing here? Oh, actually, I don't need to do a focus for Italy because they just want to join me anyway. Let's accept that. Uh, do we want to give anything to Hungary? We do not. Hungary is my puppet. Romania is actually more useful as a puppet than Hungary because they are bordering the Soviet Union, so they will do more in the fight. Sorry, Hungary. You got your bit over here. That will have to be enough for you. And that is basically our starting state. So when do we want to attack the Soviet Union? Also, what focus do we want to do? If we do two focuses, we'll get the war goal. Is that enough time to do a proper exercise on all our units? And do we have enough um, experience for all the templates? I think so. Let's save the game now and create some templates. Edit the 18 template, duplicate it to 16 and remove one unit and save. Duplicate that, rename it to 14, remove one unit and save that and so on. I have prepared the templates. I'm not sure I'm going to be using all of them because there's quite a lot. Why do you have templates from 2 to 50? And they're exactly what you think they are. 2 is a 2 with infantry. 24 is a 24 with infantry. 36 is a 36 with infantry. And 50, surprise, surprise, is a 50 with infantry. Now I'm going to do several games from this point onward with those various widths. So I have to switch units to that and exercise them so that they're at the same level of exercise. All right, let's save this state of game. Now, how are we going to do this? I will put two army groups on the front lines so that there's enough troops, hopefully, for all the battles that will be happening. Put them on balanced and just activate an order to march into the Soviet Union. We'll do the entire Comintern Pact and then war with the USSR. And we will go into service by requirement because we might need that for larger templates. Let's start with the 18 width. That is the default starting unit size for many countries because many players will end up using those anyway. And it will serve as a benchmark for future tries. Let's also add bold attack and uh, water maneuver warfare since we are on the initial doctrine for Germany. Some of our guys are already missing supplies, but I don't want to build up uh, the railways or anything. Just keep it as is and see how well we can do. One thing we're doing is motorization priority to the maximum on both armies. Now this will not be that clear a comparison because I actually don't have enough army equipment to for all the troops, so some of them will be using older guns. But I don't think it's gonna be that big a difference, especially once we actually start making more factories. Right, and what will the US are. Time for the focus. In two months we attack. We're going to, once we attack, run the game at this setting until a preset date. I'm still not sure what I'm going to choose, maybe the end of the year, and see how far we get into the Soviet Union or how far they get into us. And then compare that to different combat widths. Actually, I should switch 
Rudolf Hess for the war industrialist. Actually, I should switch that on all the playthroughs. Let's remember to do that at the beginning of October. Buy steel from Hungary. Okay, war with USSR focus is complete. We have two months until the end of the year. Perhaps that will be sufficient. Let's declare war and call all the allies. I did not provide a garrison for the ports. Maybe that will not be a problem. If it is, I might need to restart this with. Let's go. Everyone is called in. They are entrenched and we're attacking with infantry. So, hmm. I guess, you know what? We'll do that on aggressive, after all. Yeah, needs some adjustment. Looks like two months might not be enough for a comprehensive result. I think I'll run this a bit longer. Full of Kiev, good. Remember, this is just pure infantry with nothing but guns. Well, and grenades and stuff like that, probably. January already. This is how far we got after three months. You can use that for comparison. Let's keep going a bit longer. Vlasov, what is that? Sure, I guess. But I'm not gonna use these divisions. Let's send them home so they don't drain our supply. What is the template on that? Pretty good. Logistics are fine. We have enough army equipment for everyone. And trucks and trains. Fall of Moscow after five months. And we seem to be picking up speed. There's an incursion from Crimea, but I'm just going to ignore that. The end of Untenemen Barbarossa. And that is a fitting end to this test. We have gone very far into the Soviet Union. We have taken Moscow. We have reached Leningrad almost. And we're still a bit away from Stalingrad. But this is clearly a victory in the making. I have not given any extra trace to the generals or anything like that. Just kept it as is. That's six months on 18 with. Okay, let's save that and go back in time. It is time for combat with two. It's gonna go horribly and we're gonna die, but I'm gonna test it nonetheless. Exercise everyone, that won't take too long. I don't remember when I made the switch last time, but let's get the war industrialist. Anyway, focus complete. Let's attack and be killed, because with two cannot possibly work. Here we go. We're actually making some gains, but it's the Romanians doing all the work. One month, we've been pushed back significantly, and we lost quite a lot of units. Two months, not as bad as I expected, but pretty bad. Okay, and they just got Lithuania. Six months have passed. This went better than I expected. I actually thought they would be in Berlin by now, but it looks like our allies actually picked up the slack. Doesn't really matter. Two width is terrible. Don't use it. Moving on. With four. With four is also very weak, and it's also going to be terrible. Oh, interesting. I can invite Bulgaria into my faction. But this is a test. I couldn't do it before, so if I did it now, it would distort the results. War goes here. Let's go. Perhaps I should have done it without the allies. What if I change things up now? The testing we've done so far would be worthless. Definitely looking better than with two. Two months, we've made some progress, but there's not much difference from with two. It's slightly better. The main difference is that we're not dying so quickly. Last time, we lost half our units. Now, we don't really make much progress, but we still have most of them. The end of Barbarossa. The 1st of May. This is our progress on with 4. With 4 is terrible, but not that terrible. Oh, and they just got the 20 as well. So yeah, with 4, not so good. Let's keep going. Switching to 6. Exercise. Let's go. We'll go ready. Let's go. Did I remember to go aggressive? Yes, I did. That's with 6 on everyone. I don't expect much improvement from with 4, but there should be some. Months in, there is some progress. At this point, increasing the combat width will only make things better because we're just sending more soldiers to the front lines and we're not meeting the maximum combat width anywhere. So I guess it doesn't really make sense to make them one by one, but let's make this exhaustive and exhausting. End of Barbarossa, three months. It's pretty bad. Let's keep going. Eight. Orgos ready, combat with eight. Let's go. For now, I'm just expecting that every next higher combat width will be slightly better. Until we reach something like 26 to 30, then things will probably start getting more interesting. Some good initial progress on combat with 8. Fall of Kiev. Combat with 8 seems to be a huge jump from 6, and because we actually managed to get to Kiev. With 8 really is a big jump. We're nearing Leningrad. And we managed to take Leningrad, which is interesting. Actually, in the first test with 16 with, we managed to take Moscow and almost reach Stalingrad, but we did not take Leningrad. Well, it shows there is some randomness involved. Anyways, combat with 8 looks like we'd actually win this war. A first serviceable one, I'd say. Let's save this for comparison. We had less troops, but I guess we had enough troops and better supply. Nevertheless, let's keep going. Time for with 10. Let's go. You know the drill. War will ready. Declare. Go. This time we are on a 10 with template. Looking fine. Kiev fell after three months. Oh, we're actually starting to see differences based on the actual combat width. Like here it's 120 allowed. Here it's just 90. And just a moment ago, I saw we exceeded it somewhere and we captured an ally again. Uh, right, we're about to capture Leningrad perhaps, but we haven't actually captured it this time, but we've gone further towards Moscow. So there are some random differences, but overall 10 did a bit better than 8, which is to be expected. So far, the bigger the better. Let's keep going. Switch to 12 and exercise. 
Work got ready with 12. Let's go again. Two months, once again a small improvement, it seems. Three and a half months in, going well. Fall of Moscow. With 12 is the first one we actually managed to reach Moscow with. I am slightly annoyed. This damn speech keeps playing for me. Whatever I do. If I, if I activate the speeches. See? History shows that there are no invisible armies. It is now playing, even though I told it not to. Even if I turn this off, it always goes back to that damn speech. I don't want to hear speeches, I want to hear music. I guess I'll just have to uninstall this. Yeah, right, that's the end of with 12. Actually, this is a similar level of progress to the 18 with that we did, I think. Might be due to random factors. Well, no, there we got a bit more in the north. But we also have Moscow here and we're nearing Stalingrad. Was this the first? That the god Moscow? I'm getting confused. I'll save it for later. Time for 14 with. War goal complete. Let's declare war, as usual. 14 with this time. Since around 10 with, there is not much difference in the initial phase of the attack, it seems. Differences do come a bit later. Fall of Kiev, around the same time every time. The same damn speech again. Over and <laughs> every freaking time. Alright, let's try and just go further, skipping it. Got Sevastopol? Okay. Are we gonna get Moscow this time? I don't think so. Which is slightly weird, but I guess it might be up to random chance. There are small variations between the runs. But this is actually going worse than the 12th width for some reason. Okay, so here we are. Didn't take Moscow, doesn't take Leningrad. But we did take Sevastopol. I'm not sure what the deal here is, but there is always some randomness. For example, last time Joseph could have received the strikes, for example, event which could have made them weaker. But now there's not that big a difference from 12 to 18, I guess. But let's still check 16. Work was ready. Let's go 16 with. Three months. This seems like an RNG thing because it's March and we only now got Kiev. Whilst both the smaller widths like 12 and the higher one of 18 uh, got much further than this. I should probably try and repeat this one. Let's do that. Same thing again, to just see if 16 is a really bad or if it was random chance. Well, let's go again. For Kiev in January, better than last time, but not amazing by any means. We have actually taken Stalingrad. The randomness on this is bigger than I expected, because we managed to take Moscow and Stalingrad and Leningrad on a 16 with, even though it performed very badly in the previous take. I'm beginning to think I might need to design a more robust test, not so prone to randomness, but that's very difficult to achieve. This was very controlled, wasn't it? Just infantry with guns, nothing else, and declaring on the same date. And this is actually the same setup, 16 with, on aggressive, same declaration date. Last time we got halfway here. This time we got Leningrad, Moscow and Stalingrad. Well, but we are gaining some insight into the game. This time it even performed better than 18 with. To make this scientific I should repeat each of them several times and then take the mean result, but that's like days of work, so maybe not. Let's keep going and see if any of them are overwhelmingly stronger than the others. Time for 20. Theoretically speaking the sweet spot should be somewhere around 26, 27, but that's just theory. Right, 20 with. Oh, I can't exercise them until they get reinforcements. 20 with, very commonly used previously. Well, let's go. Again. Three months in. Might be the best run yet, we'll see. Got Moscow, got Sevastopol, and we might get Leningrad, but I don't think we're getting to Stalingrad. So the second run on 16 actually did much better than this. And there it is. We didn't take Leningrad, we didn't take Stalingrad, we got Moscow. That is 20 with. Surprisingly, 16 did better, I think, and so did 12. This might be random, I might need to keep repeating this, but there are other factors at play as well. For example, at 20 width, we don't have as much supply as we had at 12. So that also needs to be taken into account. Time for 22. I realize there are problems with supply now, but I want to test this in a realistic situation. I guess you could theoretically keep building railways and doing stuff like that when you're advancing, but I usually don't, so I want this test to reflect that too. We are already missing supplies here. But that's also relevant if you have an army of 12 with, who can do better than like 30 with armies, because there's just less soldiers and they don't suffer supply stuff, then that is also relevant, I guess. Alright, let's not forget to set them to aggressive. I'd like a hyper-aggressive option, where they just go into every empty province there is and don't worry about supply at all and stuff like that. Bulgaria was available for a moment, it seems, but the moment has passed. All right, focus is ready, declare war as usual. Now, why is combat width important? See, this battle permits a combat width of 104 in this particular situation. We have five divisions of 22 each, 110 total. And exceeding combat width is giving us a very big penalty, actually. Now, you could math this out for different provinces and stuff like that. 
but I'd rather just let the game do that for me. So far everything from 12 to 18 performed pretty much alright, but I've had very good results with a 27 with unit, I think. Or was it 26? Doesn't really matter. Anyways, um, I'm eager to see if there's a difference in this test. Kiev is mine. We're having some serious supply issues, but nothing that would stop us. Remember that I'm using two full army groups for all of these. So every time I increase uh, the number of units in, in the template, I'm also bringing more soldiers to the front lines. We're at 22 now. That's almost twice as much as we had with 12. And the result is similar. Makes me think smaller might actually be a bit better, but we'll see. Oh, damn it. You know what I didn't do? I did not compare casualties. But it is a bit late to start doing that now, isn't it? Uh, right. And once again, the result is very similar. We took Moscow and we were relatively close to Stalingrad and Leningrad. So this is within the margin of error. For now, everything from 12 to 22 is serviceable. Let's keep going out to find the cutoff point where the width is too big. Oh, let's also check the casualties. Almost 1 million. I'll have to compare later. 24. War goal ready. Here we go then. Oh, you're still exercising. It's a mistake on my part, isn't it? Oh, some of them didn't get enough supplies to exercise properly, so they're not ready to fight. That's an omission. Probably should have taken that into account. Maybe you left more time for them to adjust. But let's do it anyway. The difference is not that big. It was just a couple of units. Moscow is ours in April, so nothing too special. Very similar to all the previous runs. I'm thinking uh, the increase in power we get from, you know, packing more troops inside is counterbalanced balanced by the lack of supplies. But I have a small theory to test. See, we essentially have twice as many troops in the field as we had with the 12 width. So, for our next try, I'm just going to disband one of these armies and try again. We could actually be balancing this by just disbanding several troops in each run, but I thought this would be simpler and show enough information. Okay, Barbarossa is over. Um, very similar results. Got Moscow, not Stalingrad or Leningrad. All right, let's do this again, but this time do 24 with just one army group. All right, let's not forget to check casualties. 880,000. So, disband. And you switch to 24. Okay, war goes here, let's go. This time we're doing 24 with with just one army group rather than two. Let's see if there's a difference. I guess maybe I should have been adjusting the number of units as we go along. Hmm, a bit underwhelming. Performance is not so great. Looks like more units is better because that gives us greater flexibility to reinforce attacks and so on. Full of Kiev, late January. Once again, the time has come and this time we haven't even reached Moscow. We didn't get Stalingrad, Leningrad, Sevastopol, or Moscow. Oh, actually we did get Sevastopol. Italy did. Nevertheless, this was rather underwhelming. So it seems more units is better. Specifically, the same amount of soldiers split into more units performed better. About casualties? Well, the casualties are lower. I guess that is a plus. Now, let's compare this to the outcome of the 12 width very quickly. Fortunately, I've said that. Here you go. Very similar picture, but we went slightly further in this one. And the casualties were much higher, so that is something to consider. Larger units, but less of them, will mean less casualties, but also we got much less ground in this. I'm still a proponent of just having more units. It seems that would be best. Nevertheless, let us continue. 26 now. Switch to 26. Perhaps I should have been testing this with just one army group. Then the supply situation wouldn't be, wouldn't have as much of an impact. By the 14th of March, we're very far in. 26 might be the best option, but we'll see. Yeah, right, and that's it for 26. This is actually a very good result. We got Leningrad, Moscow, went further in, and almost got Stalingrad. So yeah, 26 is looking very promising. Casualties? A little below 800,000. Although remember that there is a degree of randomness here. Just remember how big a difference we had in two attempts at 16 width. Nevertheless, this is good. Here's a comparison to the successful 16 width one, and it's very similar. Even the casualties are similar. Although the 26 one did a bit better in the north, it didn't get Stalingrad, so you know, random stuff. Let's keep going. 28. War goes ready. Here we go. 28. We were on 28 and got Kiev only on the 18th of January. So, a bit underwhelming. So far, 26 seems the best, but we got a similar result on our second try with 16. So this definitely needs more testing. Got Moscow and Sevastopol, but it doesn't look like we're gonna get much further than that. So 28 definitely looking worse. Not as good as 26. Casualties? Very high. Okay, let's go on. Let's try out 30. We'll go ready. Well, let's go. 30 with. I'm expecting this won't go too well, because at this stage we started running into penalties. See, we can't fit well into a 78 with, for example. 
will have either be 60 or 90, both of which are not very good for us. Well, this one is working, for example. But there's too many variables to just calculate this. We have to test, which is why I'm doing it like this. This is going relatively well, but not as well as uh, the 26 one. Then again, randomness is a factor, definitely. Although there's still a lot of time, we might actually have a very good result here. Okay, we got Stalingrad and we got Moscow. This might be an even better result. Okay, that's it. This time we got Stalingrad, we got further down south. We didn't get Leningrad, but almost. So this is a result comparable to the 26 and the good 16 run. A very good result. And again, it is subject to randomness. Let's keep going until we start seeing a steep decline in effectiveness. Still a lot of work ahead of us. 32. It's already changed. I realize this is not perfectly scientific, but we have to start somewhere. We can further refine the testing if it is something uh, that you find interesting. But for now, treat this video as a first step. And tell me in the comments if I should take more steps of this kind. Perhaps a better testing method would be to normalize the armies with the number of soldiers in the field. So if I'm increasing the width of the template, I should disband a few units just to have the same amount of troops. And uh, I could do that, but I have to scrap everything I've done. So let's just see what results we get here. And then we can redo it later if you would like to see this. We'll go ready. Troops trained up. Let's go. See, learning by doing is probably the best way of learning. So I am already learning a few things I could do better in this testing. For example, not use any allies, normalize armies to the number of troops, total number of troops, and also probably repeat the testing for a different geographical location. Attacking the entire country of the Soviet Union does have variety in the provinces we have. But for example, there aren't really mountains here and there aren't really a lot of cities here. So if I was attacking into Germany, down here for example, it would be different. Slightly different, but still. So yeah, if we are to continue the testing, we have to not use allies, normalize by number of troops, and then repeat results for different geographical locations, probably. This doesn't look very good. Why are you not attacking? Did I forget to set you... Oh, damn it. I forget to set them to aggressive. I have to redo this one. Once again, this time aggressively. War goals ready? Well, let's go. Another thing, we are doing this on aggressive. It might be prudent to repeat testing on balanced. Because aggressive is a specific use case. Full of Kiev by the beginning of December. That is pretty good. We're nearing the end of the test. We did pretty well in the south, but we failed to get Moscow, Stalingrad and Leningrad. So either we did really badly on the randomness, or we have reached the point at which our troops are just too big. Let's have a look. Are we getting out of penalties? Not really. But supplies are a problem. Yeah, I should really normalize this for amount of troops and run this again. For now though, this is not very good, but let's continue. Switch to 34. Focus complete. Are we on aggressive? Yes, we are. Let's go then. Full of Kiev in late January. This is not going to be a good run. And this is the first time we started actually running out of guns because we have too many troops. Oh, I went a little bit over the time, but it doesn't really matter. We see the results are even worse than last time. At this point, it's probably due to just us not having enough supply for this. Yes, I know the test is flawed. I might repeat that in a more controlled environment just to account for this. Let's continue with 36 and see if we uh, still see a decline. If we do, it might not really make sense to continue testing it this way. Focus complete. Let's go one more time. And I'm actually missing guns. All right. I think this needs adjusting. I'll test one more combat with after this, I think, and then we'll start normalizing the amount of troops. Because there's too many variables here. Full of Kiev, half of January. That's the end of the testing period. And it's even worse than before. Okay, I could keep going up to a combat with 50, but I clearly see now that there's no point to it. Because there's too many troops, not enough supply, not enough guns, and I need to revise the testing methodology. So, I'm going to do a new test. This time, we'll normalize the circumstances. Let's go back. We've seen good results for anything from 10 to 30 combat with. So let's start with 10. Going below 10 doesn't really make sense. So first off, let's switch all our troops to 10 width and normalize it for the amount of troops that will be in the field. Each unit has 5,000 troops, that's 1.2 million total. And we will normalize to 1.2 million. Let's exercise them all. Oh, and also, on the attack from our own territory, we will not be calling allies in this time around. I realize 1.2 million manpower in the field is very little to fight the Soviet Union, but this isn't about winning, it's about seeing how far we go. The rest stays the same, we go with war with the USSR now. 
I'm hoping we'll get more comprehensive results at this time. Work is complete, well, let's go. Once again, this time we're not calling any allies in to keep our variables more controlled. And let's see how far we go in this time. We're not doing very well, that might be due to the fact that we're 10 with and that's not a lot of troops, um, but more likely it's because we don't have support from our allies, which do help actually. We left Kiev at the beginning of January, decent result, this is actually going very well. We even got Moscow with 10 width, doing much better than 36, but we'll see once we normalize completely. End of Barbarossa, nearing Leningrad, got Moscow very far from Stalingrad. Before we start normalizing our troops, let's modify the orders so I don't have to do it every time, and get the war industrialist, also buy some steel in advance, because we will be missing that soon. I know it's a waste of uh, resources to buy it ahead of time, but this way it's gonna be normalized. Oh really, I am missing steel. I shouldn't be missing steel at this point. Maybe I won't be once I unpause, it doesn't really matter. Make a new save, 12 with everyone. And exercise. Now we want to normalize this to 1.2 million. We have 144. Let's just disband this army, right? This army is 014 million, so I can disband the entirety of it. I'll still have a bit too much. Half of you go home. That's almost enough. One more unit. We have to go down to 200 units. We have 203 to have the exact same amount. So three more units go home and that's it. Now we have normalized the amount of actual soldiers in the field. It's the same as in the previous test, but using a different combat width. War goals ready. This should be much more informative. No allies this time. Aggressive as well. 1.2 million troops and this time using a 12 width template. Now there is math to be done about this. You can analyze the possible combat widths and how much of a penalty you'll get all that and sure that makes sense but this way i'm letting the game do the math for me essentially that's what the computer is it computes it does math so why not use it to do math hmm, very late on the kiev attack this time but we're moving up in the north a little bit it is a bit inconsistent isn't it we did really poorly in the south this time but we seem to be doing much better in the north so the result on the 12 width is not that great once we have reduced the amount of troops in the field perhaps you just need more troops to beat up the soviet union but we'll see in a moment next up 14 width again now for this we should have 172 units to have the same amount so this band and this band and this band. Whoops, I disbanded too many units by four to be exact. Let's try them real quick. Hopefully they can exercise in time. I'm not sure they'll be fully trained by the time we start fighting, but that shouldn't be that big an issue. Okay, deploy into the field immediately. Exercise. Did I remember to go aggressive with the 12 width? I have to check that. See, I've been doing so many, many tests. My <laughs> mind is kind of starting to go blank on the details here. 1.2 million in the field, as it should be. Okay, these guys will not be fully trained up, but it's just a little bit. It shouldn't make a big difference in the final result. It's just four units. All right, focus complete. Let's go, declare war, no allies, attack. Full of Kiev, early January, that's pretty good. And we're doing very well in the north. The beginning of March, we're doing well enough, I'd say. Nothing too special. Seems like this time we're getting a more comprehensive result now that we've normalized for manpower. Oh, damn it, this speech again. I'm beginning to think having lots of generals is actually better and just lots of units without concern for their width that much. Uh, still, mm, not that great, but still winning. Let's save this and continue. Let's check if I actually remembered to go aggressive on the 12 width. Well, I'll still remember. Yes, I did. Okay. As you can see, 12 did much better than 14. Anyways, let's continue with 16. We need 150 units to make this work. So, this band, this band, and this band. 120, so we need 30 left here. So, you are going to be left with 6. Oh, did I? Is that, um, is that a good amount of manpower? Yes, 1.2 million. Perfect. Exercise, go aggressive. We're now on 16 width. 8,000 troops in each unit. Maybe I shouldn't have researched the better guns and just stuck to the basic ones. That's another variable we could have normalized. But since we're using the same start point for all the tests, it shouldn't really make a difference. The field marshals have the same traits, so it doesn't really matter that I am, you know, disbanding this army and leaving this one intact. Theoretically, I could have been disbanding, you know, one unit from each army, stuff like that, to keep it more balanced. But since they have the same traits and all the generals are at level four, I don't think it matters. Focus ready. There we go. This is 16 with. We've had varied results because I think I've repeated 16. Due to RNG, there was a very bad run and a very good run. Now that we are not calling our allies in, perhaps the variables will be more balanced and we won't need to repeat it. For Kiev in December, that's pretty good. Going pretty well so far. We might even take Moscow this time, we'll see. And uh, there's Italians stealing my supplies. 
Oh well, if they do, they do it in all the runs, so it doesn't matter for comparison. Moscow is ours. Overall, a decent result, I'd say. Nothing too crazy, but decent. Okay, let's save and move on. Now it's time for 18, so we don't really have to switch anything, since we start with 18 with the units, but we have to reduce the amount. So let's disband these four armies completely, and we're gonna need 133 units. So we we'll disband 11 of his guys, 133, manpower in the field, almost 1.2 million. Already trained up, so we don't really have to do anything else. 18 width is the template we start with. Of course, the one we start with has support companies as well. But support companies are a completely different animal that we have to approach in a different testing methodology, if we want to approach it at all. See, if we make two units, one 20 width and one 10 width, and give them full support, two 10 width units will be far stronger than one 20 width unit, because they'll have double the support, which is why we added no support for the testing. And there are several concerns like this, but we'll talk about them at the end of the video. Almost forgot to set aggressive. I mean, balanced might be better, but we want to use the same tactic on each test. Focus complete, let's go. No allies. And wait six months. Hmm, not doing too well, it seems. This might be a fluke due to random chance, but it is really not looking too good. Full of Kievan March. Yeah, this is a pretty bad run. Not sure if it's a random factor, or if just more units means better. That is in more troops, more units, so that they can, you know, coordinate better and stuff like that. But we'll see. We'll do 20 next. Right, we're done. A pretty bad result for 18 width. For 20 width, we'll just disband one entire army group. Because 20 is twice as big as 10, and we normalize for 10, so we'll have 1.2 million with one full army group at 20 width. 1.2 million in the field, all trained up, 20 width pure infantry. We'll go ready, let's go. This is 20 width, so that's the old go-to width. This and 40, we'll see how it performs. Looking fine so far. It looks better than the previous run, but it's not very good. It really looks like more units is better, regardless of the combat width. Well, no, not regardless, but splitting the same amount of troops among, you know, more generals seems to work better. At least that's the working conclusion right now. But we still have a lot of testing to do. If you have more units, they can switch in and out of the fight more often. That might be the main reason why it went much better if I had more units. Or rather, the same amount of troops divided into more units. Slightly disappointing. Right, that's it. So it looks a bit better than 18 and 16, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm mistaken, I'd have to check. Anyways, definitely looks worse than 12. Let's keep testing, but my working conclusion is that the more armies in general you have filled up with units, the better, even if the units are smaller, up to a certain limit. Time for 22. Let's ban this entire army, switch you to 22. We need 109 units, so I need to disband 11. Get in position and exercise. All goals ready. The war. Let's see. Hmm, looking promising. To Kiev in December. This might be a better run. Remember, there's a randomness element associated with this. We're getting decent progress on the 22 width. Oh no, we're not <laughs> actually got a naval invasion. Um, this is strange because the naval invasion hasn't happened in any of my previous runs, so I didn't really account for that. I mean, I could. Yes, I could station an army to prevent it, but I didn't have to since they you know, didn't try it. Uh, but this is clearly not a good example. I have to redo this one because, well, naval invasion uh, also means they took some troops out of the main front line, meaning my advance is easier, but also they're attacking me from the back. So uh, let's try this one again. Or maybe just go back to an autosave. I don't remember when the naval invasion started, but maybe it will be before that. Nope. Okay, let's start this one again then. I've done speech again, I really have to uninstall this DLC once I'm done with this. Let's hope we don't get a naval invasion this time. Yeah, I guess I could send an army to protect the coast. We'll do that if it happens again. I decided that since we are uh, actually in danger of having to repeat another run because of uh, a naval invasion, I will send this army, which we're not going to be using from now on anyway, over here to garrison the ports and the coast. So we don't have to worry about that. And I'll switch them to, I guess, 10 width is enough, so we don't have to uh, supply them with manpower or anything like that, while this army continues the testing at 22. Focus complete, let's go again. Yeah, this is looking pretty bad, isn't it? Don't worry about the extra army, they're not draining resources, I have enough guns and people for everything. For Kiev, late January, not horrible, but not good either. It's March and we've barely moved past Kiev. A rather poor run, it seems. Oh, I was supposed to send this army here, set it to garrison all that, and make a save so that we can use it in 
future testing, but I forgot to make that save. Alright, we're done, and it's pretty bad. Seems like the higher we go, the worse it is. Another attempt, this time with 24. And add that with, that will be exactly 100 units. Once again, I've sent some troops up north to guard against naval invasions, just in case. We have 1.8 in the field, but uh, 600,000 is in this army that's doing garrisons. This won't really affect our logistics or anything, because we have a large reserve of guns and manpower. And here's the war goal. Full of Kiev on the 25th of January, pretty late. And we've stalled. Right, the time is up, and we have hardly moved. Well, we've moved, but just a little bit. So clearly, not the best result. I think the pattern is clear here. This was 24. Let's still do 26, because 26, 27 is something that I've had good experiences with earlier. 26 with, and we go down to 92 units. So you guys disband, and four more disband. And that's it. We're all ready. Here we go. As usual, this time it's 26. I don't really expect to see any large difference. It's probably gonna be pretty bad, something like this here. 20th of January, and we have not even reached Kiev yet. Oh, I forgot to go aggressive. Damn it. Here we go again. Right, this one is uh, the same one again, 26. I did have to repeat it because I forgot to set the guy to aggressive. So I've made a new save to start from with him already set to aggressive, so it doesn't happen again. Oh, I think we're doing even worse than with balanced. Oh no, not worse, but similar. Kiev fell in late February. Rather terrible. Oh, that's a bit of a surprise. Let's extend this guarding army to take care of it. Is it better than 24? I'm not sure. I, I think it is slightly better than 24. End of Barbarossa. Um, slightly better than the last one. So 26 really seems to be a good combat with. Still not as good as uh, 10 or 12, apparently. Should we keep going? Yeah, we probably should. 28. We'll need 86 units for that. 86, there we go. Get in position. Once again, the war goes ready. 28 with. Let's go. Have we been pushed back? Oh, might have hit the breaking point. Maybe starting at 28 will just not win. Pull of Kiev in April. This is terrible. Right, we're done with this. Um, not the worst, but not good either. 11 to go. Now we go to 30 with. And that means we have to go down to 80 divisions, which means reducing this guy to 8. This band 16, and that's 80. Once they reinforce, that would be 1.2 million manpower. Hopefully I can exercise them in time as they get bigger. That could change the results a bit, but seeing how it declines and declines, that probably won't be a big change. Currently at 30 width, which means 15k manpower per division. We started at 5 manpower per division. So these units are three times as big as the ones we used at the start. And still, the smaller ones were doing better. War go ready? Oh, let's go. Let's have a look at a typical attack here. See, our combat width is 30. Allowed combat width is 126. So we can stack four units for 120, which would probably be best. Or we stack five units for 150, which results in a large penalty to combat width. If we were at 10 combat width, that wouldn't be 150, it would be 130, with a much smaller penalty. I am tempted to just end the testing here and assume that it's gonna get worse and worse, but there was this video by Feedback where they postulated, he and the person who did the math, that commit with between, I think that was 42 to 46? I don't remember exactly. I'll put the link in the description if you want to watch it. Um, but that was theory and trying practice. Anyways, um, it was postulated there that uh, I think 42 to 46 will have very good results. I don't think it will pan out this way, but I want to see it. That is a weird development with this little bit here. March and we still haven't taken Kiev. We're expanding a bit better in the north, but still this doesn't look too good. Finally got Kiev in April. Well, to be honest, this doesn't look too bad, but it still doesn't look very good either. All right, we're done. Nothing too special about this run. Let's go on. 10 to go. Time for 32. And we'll need 70, and we'll need 75 divisions for that. Which means this guy will be left with three. Is that correct? Yeah. The differences we're observing now are not that big because at this size of units, a change by, you know, one infantry battalion is not such a huge change. When we're dealing with stuff from 10 to 20, those changes were much larger in terms of, you know, how it affected the single unit. I guess what I'm trying to say is we're changing them by a smaller percentage the later we are into this. So we should probably see smaller and smaller changes to the overall effect. 
We'll go ready. 32. Here we go. Don't really expect much change from the previous one. December. Very little progress. This might uh, distort our results a bit. The Soviets got Latvia for free. I extended uh, on the line so just, you know, they don't go around us. It's not like this is very important. 10, 12 and 16 all had better results than this. So we have our answer, but let's make sure the testing is complete. I've done this much work. It's not that much more to complete it properly. Oh, uh, yeah, I actually <laughs> went over by one month by mistake. I got fixated on thinking about the next one and missed the end of Barbarossa. Anyways, even with an extra month, this is not very good. Time for 34. And for that, we'll need 71 units. So you go home and you go home and one of you goes home as well. The rest go to 34. Let's go. What goes ready? 34 with. Let's go. Yet again. It's the 15th of January and we haven't really moved much. It's the end of March and we just now took Kiev. There is some expansion in the north, but overall this is pretty bad. Oh, that's what it's got here. But it doesn't really matter anymore. We're about to end. Okay, that's the end. Um, we've seen worse, but it's by no means good. We're spread too thin with too few units. Let's keep going. Time for 36. That means a total of 67 units are to be used. We have to disband five from him. Yep, that'll do. Continuing. Here we go again. 36 with. Kiev in January. Okay, okay, that's slightly better. 36 with doing good work, apparently. Definitely better than the previous one. Okay, 36 doesn't do a great job, but it does a decent enough job, it seems. Barbarossa has ended, and I mean, it's better than some of the previous ones. Still not as good as the small templates, as usual. Seven to go. 38 width. That means we should be using 63 divisions. So we go home, and so do you, and you will be left with 15. That'll do. Are you guys going to finish your exercise in time? They should. Once more into the fray we go. 38 width this time. And we're back in pretty bad territory. February, still no Kiev. Full of Kiev on the 7th of April. So we could have had Moscow by now. Barbarossa has ended. That's not very good, is it? 56 was slightly better. Let's go and check 40. 40. And 40 is exactly four times as big as the ones we started with. So just a quarter of the original army will be using it. There we go. Get ready. 40 with. Declare war. Pretty decent progress in the north. But apart from that, not so great. Okay, even March, but we moved much further up north. Might even get Leningrad. Results for 40 with? Not that bad. Not too bad indeed. Let's go on. Oh, we lost one unit. Didn't notice that before. Five more to go. 42 with. There's gonna be a total of 57 units that we want. Just like that. War goes ready. We are at 42 with, so if uh, I'm to believe the math in that feedback video, should start seeing an improvement right now. I'm not so sure about that. I think smaller units will be much more efficient, but there are cases for big ones as well. We'll talk about that more later. Once we're done with all the tests, I will present my conclusions, which I've already drawn, but they still might be overturned if we see something very unusual. Full of care in January. That's pretty decent. Maybe there's something to it. Ah, oh, they got Latvia. But it's already April, so before they move troops here and attack from behind us, it's not really worth doing anything with it, I think. Oh, they're trying a naval invasion. Well, maybe I actually should take care of that so, that, so to not disturb our test. Go there. All right, this is not very reflective of what it should be because of the invasion through Latvia. Let's run this particular one again. Let me just load the last auto save. Perhaps I can remedy the problem in time. Now we've got some of the troops here and send them over here quickly so it doesn't distort the overall image. The results might be slightly distorted by the fact that the Soviets will have uh, sent some troops to secure the area, but it shouldn't make much of a difference. Okay, we're done. 42 it works. It's better than some of the ones we had that only moved up this far, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Right, let's save and go on. 44. For that we should have 55 units. I actually started the exercise a little late. I'm not sure we'll be able to manage the exercise in time. Even if we don't, the difference in strength is not that great. Okay, we managed to finish the training in time. That's good. 44. January's ending. Are we gonna take care of now? Seems like it, yeah. Well, maybe in a moment. 
for Kevin February. Not that great. Extend the front line a bit here. 44, definitely not amazing. 40 did much better. And I realize we're starting to run into constraints of just not having enough troops to cover the front lines effectively, but that is part of the equation. If you have more troops, you can cover your front lines more effectively. And I know, sure, some front lines are smaller. If you're fighting, I don't know, if you're hungry and you're just fighting Romania, your front line will be much smaller. Uh, but this is not such a huge front line, actually. I've had much bigger. So I think it's a good example. Anyways, 44. Not that great. 46 with. That's gonna be 52 units. Delete these guys, delete these guys, and leave you with four. Let's go again. Just three attacks left. This and two more. This is pretty bad. 22nd of March. Still no Kiev. Oh, the Soviets got some territory. Let's take that. Whoa. Okay, and that will distort it a bit, because Finland got attacked, they automatically joined our faction and called in Italy and the like. However, we're so far in that I can see that it's not going very well. Also, apparently we were so weak that the Soviets felt confident in attacking Finland. That was 46 with. Now, this is not exactly representative because of the war with Finland and our allies being called in. Realistically, without the allies, it might be even a bit worse. Still, don't use 46 with. Let's go on. 48 with, that will be 50 units. So, 48 with. It'll probably go pretty badly. We'll go ready. This is probably going to be very bad. 50 units of 48 with each. Well, it's not going as badly as I expected it to. We have given February. We've seen worse. The Soviets got some extra territory. Let's cover that. It's just not enough troops to cover this effectively. Hmm, this is actually an okay result. Seriously, I expected there to be much more of a decline with the increase of combat width. Uh, let's do one last test with 50. 50 width means we go down to two armies exactly. This band, this band, and this band. Get in position and exercise a bit. They're not done with their exercise and we're about to attack. Well, they're almost done, almost all of them. Now oh, let's let them finish. They'll just not have organization for the first few days. And it's just a few of them, not all of them. The war, not the last one. 50 width, here we go. The problem with such a setup is even though our units are strong, uh, well, one problem is they're getting massive penalties. If we add another unit here, the penalty will be huge. Uh, there's no flexibility in that. The other problem is there's no flexibility in reinforcing your front lines properly. Right now it's not a big issue because the front line is relatively short, but as we go further into the Soviet Union, the army won't be able to, you know, distribute properly and we'll just have one or two units in each province, which is not too effective if you want to advance. No, oh, naval invasion blocked. And this is one of the worst attempts probably. Oh, full of Kiev in April, and they felt so confident against me that they attacked Finland. Oh well, don't use 50 width, I guess. That's the end of Barbarossa. Uh, nothing surprising here. Okay, we're done after many, many hours of testing. Now, I want to give you the conclusions, but first let's review the progress on the 10 width and the 12 width, how far each of them went. See how much better that is. That's 10 width for you. Let's load the 12 as well. That's the 12. Very similar. So what are the results? What are the conclusions? What is my recommendation? It is pretty simple, really. Let's go to the division designer. You start with a 10 width template or a 12 width or 11. You can make it an 11 if you put an artillery in it. Just start with a 10 width, essentially, and make as many of them as you can afford to support. So use your command power to buy generals, of course, and get as many armies, as many army groups as you can afford to equip, to support, and to have generals for, and bake them 10 with, because it works the best in terms of how much we put in and what results we get. Now, if you have more manpower and more equipment than you need, and all your armies are filled up with 10 width, and 10 widths, you don't have more generals, well, that depends on the country you're playing, really. For example, Germany starts with a huge amount of generals. We could easily do four army groups, and we should. We probably should. But if you're playing a country that, for example, has penalties to command power, or doesn't start with any generals, that's not really going to be viable for you. So one or two army groups is probably what you're going to end up with in that case. So just, yeah, just fill them with 10 width. And as you get more command power, get more generals, get more field marshals and get more 10 with divisions. Now, if, that's an if, if you have more equipment, more manpower, more production capacity than you need to support those 10 widths, and you don't have enough command power to make more, then you can grow them. But before you do that, you should also start adding support companies. My usual go-to for support companies, well, I haven't really researched anything here, but uh, 
My go-to for support companies is a support artillery, a recon detachment, engineers, support anti-air, so I don't really have to worry about planes, and a signal company, which we haven't researched in this place because it was not needed. Now, this might not be perfect, but it's worked well for me over time. And that's another benefit of having small units, because if you're using 10 width units versus, say, 50 width, you'll be able to bring five times as many support companies to the same width of battle. Of course, they're also going to cost more, to produce, but uh, I think we all know how that works. It costs stuff to produce stuff. So yeah, first, get as many 10 widths as you can support and have generals for and equip, then give them support companies, but that really depends on your production capabilities. So, for example, you might have enough production capabilities to make infantry weapons, but not enough to make enough artillery. That it really is a flexible issue. So, yeah, what I would do is just get as many 10 widths as you can and then start giving them support companies and only after that make them bigger realistically you are getting command power all the time so when you're progressing through the, through the game you're producing more units you're giving them support producing that and so on you will gradually also get more command power and be able to get more generals and more army groups and fill them up with 10 with as well. But if you can't do that, or you just think you have enough army groups, say you're at four army groups and you don't want to get any more so that, you know, your screen looks good or something, or just your production capabilities are so big that you're wasting manpower and equipment, then only then would I start adding more units to increase the combat width. Now, I'm not taking into account exact composition because we might as well be doing something like this with artillery rather than just pure infantry. But that's not the point. Use a lot of small units, but no lower than 10 because below that they're just very weak. At least 10 width, a lot of units, then give them support, make more, actually make more, then give them support, and only after that make them bigger. And I think those results are pretty comprehensive. As for how big you want to make them later on, if you want to make them bigger, uh, we've had good results with 10, 12, then I think 16 and 18 were fine. All the way up to 26 we were okay, I think. I don't remember exactly, you can review the video. It's It's been hours, hours and hours of testing, not... The most fun experience but quite informative. So now going down from 18 width I'll probably be using more of 10 and 12 width divisions. That being said the initial size for many countries that you get is 18 width and this is fine. 18 width is okay. You can do that, you can use that. If you don't want to you know optimize yourself, get more armies or just don't have generals for it, 18 will work fine. But don't go too small, don't go below 10 and don't go too big. Yes, we had some results with 40, but as you can see, the results with 10 and 12 are much, much better. 26 was good, I think. I'd have to check, let me have a quick look. It was 26, or was it 20? I think both were fine. Nope, 26 was actually much worse than 10 and 12. And let's load 18 for a moment. 18 was not as good, but it was fine. So we, if you don't want to mess with the templates, you can use the default 18 with that most countries get. Well. I think most countries get it. Well, many of them do, definitely. But if you want to optimize your combat width, and you wouldn't be on this video if you didn't, just go down to 10, make lots of them, and only afterwards you can possibly increase the size a little bit. That's it. I hope this video was informative. It definitely was exhausting to make. And uh, the testing methodology evolved on the way. I probably should have normalized for manpower right from the start, but I didn't really have a clear plan. Just wanted to test some things out. And it evolved into this monstrosity of a video. It is definitely much longer than I expected it to be. But I hope we've learned something today. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you'd like to see more testing, and if so, what exactly you would like tested. Maybe something with composition, maybe something with support companies. Let me know. And that is it for today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.